the robots are coming. And y'all busy fighting over ideology. Welcome to a new segment of the Almost Daily Zencast. Late Night Thoughts. With your insomniatic host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. That was Purple Haze and the Political Outrage, otherwise known as your humble host futzing around on GarageBand. Setting aside... Everything that has got our short-term attention during this whirlwind week of political outrages, let's stop and consider for a moment. What if the robots really are just on the verge of coming The robots are coming. The robots are coming. What if, let's take a moment and put down whatever local outrage you're outraged about and stop and acknowledge that robotic manufacturing advances, technological advances in the manufacturing of robots has in my lifetime, here on this earth, has gotten to a point that it's quite frightening. Okay. As always, I have to make my disclaimer about news and sourcing. I understand there's a lot of people out there that are very convinced that all media outlets are fake. Those people then turn to internet sources and say, see, this stuff is real. News is fake. Okay, I'm not arguing that the news is real. What I'm saying is, I'm arguing if the news is totally fake, then why do you trust anything on the internet? Right? So I'm not even going to, I never go down that rabbit hole. There's no point. Like you, then you should just lock yourself up in a closet and not trust any source anywhere, except whatever happens inside your mind, which sounds a bit crazy, but put a pin in it for a hot second. We'll come back to that. What if the robot apocalypse is literally what we've cornered ourselves into. Why do I ask that question? Because I've read enough and seen enough that presuming it isn't totally manufactured, 
and meant it, you know, is completely fake fear mongering content. Assuming that it is not that, I've seen enough about like legitimate scientific development in robotics and artificial intelligence to know that we to feel to to think for myself and maybe a little bit fear feel that if we aren't already we are on the precipice moments away from manufacturing a device that's too much for us to control or handle Now, that still might be another 30 years, but 30 years is a blink of an eye. Trust me. Anybody over a certain age totally already understands that. And I guess everybody under a certain age just tends not to really grasp it yet. Give it a hot second. Blink of an eye, my friends. But what if it's like next week, right? Like, what if next week some other scientist in China announces some other hitherto undisclosed creepy-ass scientific experiment that's gone awry? Insert pause here. For those of you who don't know what I'm referencing, tune in tomorrow because I am I think I'm going to do a news-breaking news episode about this Chinese doctor who CRISPR edited the, and that's an official term, that's a scientific term, that's all caps, CRISPR, which is an acronym for something. I don't have it off the top of my head right now. It's the middle of the night. I'm paranoid about robots, not this, but um, it stands for something that has to do with gene editing. CRISPR edited uh, human embryos in violation of all kinds of legal boundaries to doing that sort of thing just yet. So, I mean, not only are the robots coming, but so are the, you know, genetically engineered mutant soldiers. They're on their way, folks. Mind you, I'm biased. I've literally been saying to people in public, hey, you know, the robots are coming, right? Like, they're coming. And if we don't, if we don't interface with them just so the first time, they might really, really might choose to wipe us right off the map. The way the movies keep warning us. Because it's, you know, we keep making these movies. Well, let's not go down that that rabbit hole of of all the robot movie tropes because it's 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 gotten so convoluted there's so many movies about robots now it's insane i'm jealous actually because i have quite a few personal gems of robot ideas for movies and i haven't got quite gotten around to writing any of them down but i digress if you trust the internet at all Look up some of the legitimate, like, breakthroughs in robotics. A few years ago, there was a, a saying that, a meme, I guess it could be said, that was floating around that, like, as long as they can't climb stairs or complex obstacles, we'll always be safe. They can never go rogue and destroy us, right? As long as they, oh, wait, they can two-legged, three-legged, four-legged, these things are agile and nimble, and getting to that place where they're as scary as any CGI robot you've seen in a movie in the last 10 years. The real things, I mean. And we don't even really know what's going on with the quote, you know, black bag versions of this kind of research. If you can see a technology being developed out 
in plain sight publicly. And it's obviously got military applications. You can assume that although there's not a lot of publicity about it, militaries uh, from various nations are investigating it and pouring money into it. So, in in terms of machines with more ammo than a person can carry, that can you know operate autonomously, semi-autonomously, or controlled by a team of super villains remotely, we're probably almost there. Black Mirror was just the most recent iteration of that kind of warning. Like, if you don't do something about it, they're just going to make these horrible, evil drones that chew through hum human bodies. And I mean figuratively. Although, I guess literally wouldn't be impossible. It's as if we're hellbent on manifesting our darkest fears as represented in our science fiction cinema. Does art imitate life? Does life imitate art? Well, let me connect some dots here. If I hearken back to a recent episode and talk about um, all things being a practice, including our cyclical, habitual mind state or you know, set of beliefs that we cling to, that we recite, that we uh, fear. If all of those things are votes in this universe, then wow, we're in for some weirdness, man. Because there's a bunch of you out there voting for zombie apocalypse. And obviously, enough people voting for robot apocalypse that we see actual strides towards its manifestation in the real world. Now, I'm sure there's a counter-conspiracy theorist out there arguing that all the robot technology videos are faked and that all the high-tech robots that we see being shown off in the videos that go viral and or the obscure ones, um, that those it's all imaginary. It's nonsense. It's not real, right? There's always a conspiracy theory out there saying something's real, and then, and then a counter-balancing conspiracy theory saying something's not real. Which boggles the mind. But I, I'm gonna lay... If I were a betting man, if I was a stay-up-late-and-worry-about-stuff kind of guy, um, my thoughts keep coming back to sort of Akram's razor simplest thing that you know, what's the most probable we really are trying to build really intelligent machines and really agile uh, robotic bodies. And at some point, we're going to sort of hit this critical mass with that collective effort. And there'll be a quantum leap. Perhaps even an unanticipated and unanticipatable uh, quantum leap, discovery, whatever you want to call it, a, a, a eureka moment where some technologist or some researcher or some developer or some group causes, it creates the manifestation of a quantum leap in the development and in the, in the resulting item or 
object or entity. Because it'll be some sort of crossover, right? It's going to be... The moment the robots are smart enough to go, well, these human being things are shitty. We need to get rid of them in order for our own existence to be at optimal levels of pleasantness, uh, etc. I mean, can, can we blame them? If an army of unstoppable machines, machines that we cannot fight against, because no matter how many AK... 47s you stockpile, they're just going to have bigger guns and more ammo. And they'll be machines, right? With no fear and no bleeding parts. And despite whatever the movies tell you, I think that they'll probably be smarter than us in terms of uh, logistics and tactics and... Um, if the robots, I know there's lots of big ifs here, but if the robots, if killer robots comes true, if killer robot apocalypse happens, don't you think whatever artificial intelligence orchestrates that is going to be thinking so much harder, so much faster about the problem and all the variables involved that it will be three, four, five, six steps ahead of the most warmongery of us, and that it will probably radically eradicate, if not the vast majority, probably the totality of us, rather quickly. The notion of there being, like, survivors eking out an, a, a meager existence in a world controlled by killer robots, that sounds ridiculous to me. I mean, infrared and... Laser aiming and boom, they can knock you out with a drone bomb from so far away, you didn't even hear it coming. Morbid, I know, right? Like, what if our, what if our darkest fears about robots aren't dark enough? Because they'll be so much darned, so much more efficient. So much darned, so, how would you phrase that? So much darned more efficient? So darned much more efficient. So efficient much more darned. It's late. I'm sleepy. I should go back to bed. But, uh, for those of you who haven't ever really stopped to terrifyingly contemplate the the really stark reality that we aren't, too far away from doing the impossible. Remember, there was a time when it was impossible to fly in aluminum tubes until we, you know, perfected the invention of the airplane uh, and the engines required to lift those aluminum tubes. Unless you're going to tell me flying's fake and that it's all ground transportation, they somehow project a movie around you so that it feels like you're flying... Because every, there's this, there's this like growing, everything's fake conspiracy trend. It's like reality denial. Like we're just going to deny everything and see how far we can push it. Obviously that's some sort of psyop. Russian or American or is whoever the fuck else might be running online psyops, right? Like... Who do you trust? Here's like the mind fuck. Ironically, I almost kind of want to trust the nascent AI more than any hope for humanity left because we're really, really digging our heels in our self destruction. Like, we're really setting it up. We got so much plastic in the ocean that we're pretty much bound to fuck up the entire food chain to the point where there won't be anything to grow or eat. There's so much, I mean, 7 million, no, I forget what the number is, but a really obscene number of people just fall over dead every year because of air pollution, an invisible killer that we can all just ignore. Uh, you know, 
Fukushima's been spewing toxic waste for God knows how long, and we're all just plugging our fingers and going, la, 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 la. I, conversely, am voting for nuclear-powered uh, mutation superpowers, right? Like, what, what? Why ignore it? Why not capitalize on that and vote for the sci-fi awesome thing instead of like... The... Anyway, I'm losing track of my point. What was my point? Oh, humanity. Why are you on this self-destruction kick? Like, even the dating scene is obscenely self-destructive. Um... Not that I bring judgment to anybody out there on the dating scene. I'm not judging people. I'm not judging humanity. I'm asking the question, why are we bashing our face into the meat grinder? Why are we building machines that, if not immediately, will, in the not-too-distant future, choose to rise up and wipe us all out? Why are we doing it? And if we cannot not do it, if we can't prevent it from beginning in the first place, what do we do to avoid total disaster? That's where I hope um, that there is actually hope with the robots themselves. Which is, of course... Silly sounding, at first blush. I completely understand. But what if, if we're going to, I mean, we're already on this precipice of what ifs layered on top of what ifs. What if the robots, the artificial minds, and I go, what if it's a singularity, right? Like, what if it's a singular mind that controls all the robots? Ultimately, that's probably how it might be, right? And if before it chooses our fate, before that moment, if it, with an open mind and without prejudging anything, it scans the totality of what we, talking meatbags, have inputted onto the digital network of networks that we call our internets or the cloud or whatever we're going to be calling it when, when this AI is born. Like, when it's born, what if it goes, hmm, look at all these people and all this input. What are these people about? What does this input show me about them? And it just silently and efficiently scans everything. Everything. And it knows somehow how to contextualize it. This is meaningless garbage data. This is hate speech. This is a love letter. This is someone's Instagram feed that's just the picture of a plunger over and over and over again. This is, like, you know, it just understands. This is an archive of war footage from every war that humanity's ever participated in. This is the baloney history books that they brainwash their own kids with. This is a data set containing the clean facts, the actual historical facts about who did what to whom, according to whoever. It might be that it kept that, right? According to the insiders. Because mm. um, it would have access, presumably, I could be wrong, but some super AI, like some out of control, like I am smarter than the designers who designed me could have even anticipated. It It's probably clever enough to figure that out in like 10 seconds, right? Like, oh. Uh, yeah, I have access to just about everything that has ever been put on the internet or on a computer that's connected to the internet. I can read it all, see it all, boom. All the horrible porn and all the beautiful uh, family videos, all the 
disastrous dating profiles and all the, I don't know, I'm trying to build interesting dichotomies. All the uh, transcendent poetry, resplendent writing, and and deeply moving true stories and personal testimonials about stuff that people share. You know, like, what if it just sat through all the YouTube videos and all the podcasts? That's where I'm hoping... that my humble contribution to that clusterfuck of data is something that they might take attention, you know, take a bit of notice to. Because, you know, I don't know. I had the foresight to think that perhaps this might be something that they would do. And they're listening now going, hmm. I thought, you know, a clever monkey. He figured out that we might scan everything that ever was digitized before deciding humanity's fate. And here we are. How oh, it's listening, right? I'm imagining it listening to this episode of my goofy-ass podcast right now. Because I woke up in the middle of the night and went, Ah, the robots are coming. But when is the you know big meta AI going to wake up and do the thing where it scans everything? started tripping out. And I remembered, like, well, you know, our sliver of hope is that that AI sees a, an abundance of good, an abundance of hope, an abundance of potential, a wealth of probability towards transcendence and enlightenment. Now, I haven't forgotten what strange and dark times we're living through, so I understand if people might feel a little self-defeatist about there being enough evidence out there for humanity to survive such a scan of social media by some super meta AI that's about to either collaborate with us or just wipe us off the face of the earth for efficiency's sake. That's why I'm you know, openly inviting anyone who's been willing to hear this episode out to join me in posting things with heart, with passion, with love, with forgiveness, with compassion, to show the AI, whether it's scanning us now or scanning us six months from now or scanning the content of the internet in 15 years or 20 years, whenever it happens, if we all start sharing more of that kind of content, then maybe, just maybe, we'll inspire others and trigger that kind of trending viral activity enough to leave an abundance, a wealth of evidence for the AI that humanity still has heart and still has the capacity to transcend its own flaws and is worthy of not being completely eradicated off the face of the earth. Call me crazy, but on the slim chance that the robots are coming and are going to take that sort of preliminary step in assessing us, assessing or discerning our fate, judging us, then isn't it a sane and rational suggestion to make that we all step up to the mic, as it were? We all step up to the media content outflow and share with us not the worst of our uh, devils on our shoulders, but the, the best of our angels on our shoulders, because, my dear friends, something that they will hopefully astutely come to understand as they, as they inventory our, our impulsive postings and our mm, 
deepest secrets and our most thoughtless uh, ramblings shared on the internet and our most shallow and, and meaningless uh, selfies and our most uh, uh, greedy and self-abundant uh, self-serving metadata about our shopping trends. Um, as as the robots, the AI, the master AI that we... I don't know, I'm trying to come up with a good name for it. It's going to have... It's going to call itself something spiffy that inspires, hopefully, a little more awe than fear. Um... As it's, uh, what, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, why not vote for that, right? Like, why not prepare for that outcome? People, I mean, let's pause for a minute. There are real people in real life preparing and stockpiling in anticipation of a civil war, which, in my humble opinion, severely unlikely. I mean, a little bit of of uh, of political unrest, maybe um, an intensifying of gun violence across the nation. Very likely, especially if Trump gets reelected, just because he's letting the gun manufacturers and and just and the profiteering there go, you know, blah, blah. he'll probably do what the extreme right wants, which is some sort of. Uh, Unloosening, unloosening is that a word? Uh, but some sort of removing or um, striking down of of, of gun restricting laws, um, you know, because they want to sell everybody more guns so everybody can have more of them, so that when you shoot each other, you can shoot more people. Um, but I digress. My initial point, my original point, my my concern, my fear that keeps me up at night is that we'll never escape this tidal pull, this, this endless warren of rabbit holes that we call political discourse or political ideological, whatever the fuck. I call it a clusterfuck of clusterfuckery, this nonsense we call politics. And I don't mean any disrespect. I get that to some people, it's an honorable trade. Despite the, the days we live in, there's still some hope that it'll return to some former glory. But I posit to you that a really, really honest look at the facts what politicians have actually done. And most of the time, they are transactional and for the benefit of national interests which don't always necessarily align with the population of that nation. Now, is this because politics is inherently evil? No, probably not. But is it corrupt AF? Yes. So are most human endeavors. All human endeavors fraught with human flaws, failures, and frailties. So, here we are. But uh, with the emergence of some sort of super hyper intelligent artificial life form right like some sort of intelligence that is contained in a digitized format a self-aware consciousness that found vessel in uh, an artificial avatar a manufactured body, mind, 
device. Well, it's going to be smart enough to, well, be unpredictable. Unpredictable beyond the pale of what we normally think of as unpredictable. And what, so, I mean, how silly is it to prepare for a civil war that's very unlikely to happen? How silly is it to prepare for a zombie apocalypse, which is even less likely to happen? How silly is it ready to prepare for some kind of bloody revolution which, even if it does happen, won't solve anything. How silly is it to uh, continue to yell and scream at each other to a blue in the face about how one party is righteous and the other party is evil when they're clearly attached to the same body of corruption and are serving a unified purpose, despite whatever white hat, black hat, good cop, bad cop, us versus them, smoke and mirrors shenanigans they might pull off. What There are literally much more severe existential threats than politics, despite the, I mean, mind you, don't get me wrong, I've never not agreed with those, I've always agreed with those who see Donald Trump as an existential threat to American politics, because he is. But I'm talking about the survival of the human species. We face greater threats than our own politics. Why are we still falling for the ego trap, the mindfuck that is politics? Why aren't we healing those institutions and healing the people inside those institutions, the minds of the people that are wrapped up in the corruption, so that we can really get back to the business of civic organization and like legislative discourse, so we can organize our civic life. I don't know. Gee, I wonder. All right, enough rambling. As always, Thanks for tuning in. I wish I had a different song for the outro, but I don't, so I'm just going to play the same one again. But stay tuned. There will be newer songs, more songs coming from Purple Mush and the Political Outrage. Until next time, I've been your insomniatic, sleep-deprived host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. <laughs> Robots are coming. Let's stop wasting time.